Let's say we have a simple subject with a little more color on there too. So we're going to shoot a raspberry tart. Is this a tart? Tart. Tart. There you go. Raspberry tart. I'm going to add some more layers on here. And then we're going to add some fruit and stuff. Let's say it's a raspberry strawberry tart, okay? We have to make stuff up as we go here. So I've just decided that this is a raspberry strawberry tart. So it's a raspberry tart with strawberry glaze. So that's why I can put the strawberry on there, okay? <laughs> so I've just made that up right now, okay? So he's gonna shoot, so we're gonna shoot a second subject just for this one. Again, simple, creating the mood, a light, bright, and airy mood for this. And if at home you can see this board, and later, for all of you, you can come and see. This board has pretty much six different slats. Some are a lot smoother, some are a lot more coarse. And shooting in a situation like this where there is so much bright light, I know that I'm gonna to wanna to make sure I maintain the integrity of the board. So I'm actually gonna move this over here because I know that this is not gonna be blown out as this slat. So that's part of reading light too, is understanding how it's gonna read off your surface. So although it's, a, it's, it's white, they all can shoot differently. So on set when we're shooting, I'm always moving around, I'm always looking at how the light's gonna fall off this slat versus this slat. So I'm gonna choose this slat, just because it has all this cool coarseness here. And uh, which angle are you shooting at? Uh, I haven't decided. Hide it. So where, then next thing, we shoot? photographer's gonna decide is where camera front is. So that's why I'm asking him, where do you wanna shoot as camera front? And so, you know, I'm gonna move around, I'm gonna find mm -hmm. how I like the light. Which way is getting the look that we're looking for, or that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I think this is too pink. Maybe I should do a lighter pink. I can't decide. No, that's cool. No, maybe I'm going to change just a bit. Because I have way too many props, so I'm going to go lighter. Just because I want to really want to make it playful. So we're going to do this. Let's do, do shooting horizontal. Um, let's do vertical. Okay, well, let's do vertical. Yeah. Vertical, so I'm going to move this up front just a little bit. Yep. I'm going to lengthen the frame because one thing when we talk about shooting is like we think about not only the hero front and the um, angle in which he shoots and also if it's going to be vertical or horizontal because the placement of the subjects really have to lay within that plane. So it doesn't make sense if I'm working with him and I'm setting it as a vertical, he ends up shooting a horizontal and he cuts off everything that I put in camera front to make it pretty. She hates it when I do that. Yeah, I hate it when I do that. So part of it is communication. We'll talk about that later. So I always have to talk to him and say, are you going to shoot vertical or horizontal? Because I need to know. Or sometimes, to know or sometimes it's vice versa. I'm asking her, it's like, which way she's seeing it? Which way she's setting it up for styling it? Yeah. Styling it. So this is the raspberry tart in a very back pretty light. You know, So let's say a client says, I want, this is my product. I own a bakery. So we're going to um, create case studies. So we have a client that has this bakery that creates this beautiful tart. We say, okay, what's your mood board? Well, I want to let people know that it's just light and airy, and I want to um, um, appeal to bridesmaids. I want to appeal to those parties, and I want them to make it feel like it's um, um, something that they can add to their wedding party. I said, okay, so the, we definitely say backlight. Something that's light and airy, and it just kind of lifts kind of the frame. Just makes you feel really relaxed. You know, makes you feel feminine. You know, it makes it fun and pretty. And um, this is where the backlight would make a big difference. But for so, now, let's just shoot. Yeah, and actually, be, yeah. before I, um, I want you to, so. Do you what, like this light? Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you do. OK. So one thing about, like, this little tart, <laughs> it has, like, the great little glaze on the top, right? So here. Oh, great. Yeah, there's so, a glaze. Yeah, that's what, so I'm choosing an angle where I catch just enough of the glaze. But so I shot the previous one about right here. Let me just shoot again so you can see how little I move. And how much is going to change how the light hits that glaze? So always notice where the light's coming from. Break the shot down. And we always do this. And if we look at other people's pictures, we break it down. Let's find out where the light comes from first. So you can tell it's coming from the back. And that beautiful reflection on that glaze is awesome. So I'm the client. I'm like, I love that. So here's that. That's where I was at right here, right? Now I'm just moving just here. So what I moved, what would you guys say, like six inches? Yeah. And I'm the client, and I say, I don't like that, that harsh shadow on my glaze. I want it to look more red, and that always happens. So we say, no problem, so Todd will make the adjustment. You see? So we did not use any bounce or anything yet. And what did he do? He just moved a little bit. So you see the difference in how you can compensate the light reflections before you add anything else. And all those layers come in later. later. So um, that's one easy way to do that. And a lot of people are, are always wanting to fill and add and change. So that's great. Let's say you, um, again, that one person said, I have a lot of 
you know, reflection on my meat and steak. We shot a, a big project recently with raw meat, and there was a lot of re reflection. So we kept, because, you know, I, me, because I love my backlight, so I immediately set it to a backlight just because I wanted a lot of reflection. Because I photograph too, so I'm always seeing light. So I immediately placed it there, assuming, oh, it's going to be perfect. So when he shot it, it was too much. I was like, okay, I pre assumed that the backlight was going to work. So he just moved it around. Any questions? So that's maybe one thing for you when issues of reflection that you have is maybe you're not moving as much. Are you moving around as much? You know, or maybe you're just moving the food, but you're not necessarily moving yourself, which in effect changes the direction of light. So one great example in there. So that was kind of really simple to show that backlight. And let's say now well, I'm the client. Let's take the same subject. So now we don't want okay. to do girly. Let's okay, say, let's not do it girly. Let's say well, it's not so. Well, it's already girly because it's on pink, so it's too late. <laughs> so let's say you don't want it to like backlight. Let's say we want a little more rich. Yeah, rich. That's just so rich. <laughs> We're making no, no. it worse Actually, as we go. Yeah, no, sure. Rich. No, we'll we change surface. No, no, we'll shoot one that's rich. Let's do that. No, 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 I want to change surface. Oh, okay, he wants to change surface. God, there's so much to show. Okay, see, that, that's where you have to decide, you know? So let's go ahead and move this so off. So part of the reason why I want to change surface, too, is because the, the white, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help give tone to it, too. So our light's giving tone, and our surfaces are giving tone. The surfaces are huge. You know, it's like part of choosing what you, the, the feel that you want for your image. A lot of it's going to come from your surface and then from your props and the light. It's kind of all three together. I'm going to actually shift to this side, and we're going to block. So how about a, yes. I was having a question while you guys are working yeah, together. Yes, yes, Fantastic. Uh -huh. So a question from Fashion TV. Um, when okay. you were shooting cherries, if, if you were shooting the cherries for a glossary of a cookbook, mm -hmm. um, how do you think differently about the light when you're shooting for editorial and you know type is going to go somewhere on the page? Oh, that, it's huge. And usually we ask first, like if we shoot cookbooks, you know, sometimes editors will specifically say, I need an image for full bleed. Full bleed or half full bleed, meaning the full bleed takes over like both full pages. A half bleed is, is basically, take, the whole image takes up one half page. So they will say specifically, I need this for type, glossary, then we will always uh, think about composition first, because then obviously we know that they're gonna have type there, so we make the hero or the subject really small in the corner somewhere, so we'll give them a lot of room for type. And then we'll get an idea of the graphics on it, and they'll say it's gonna be dark type. So if they say dark type, we're gonna shoot it with a really bright backlight to give that space that all the graphic designers can work with. And if they say, well, you know, the type is going to be white, and that's what the graphic designer wants, then we'll shoot it with a more darker backlight. Well, dark, darker backlight, but the darker back. Because there's a lot of that that's communicated. Um, a lot of times it's just luck. Sometimes we'll shoot something and it worked right away. And some graphic designers will work with whatever we have. So. And when you say it worked, are you meaning it it, per, it has that emotion that you're looking for or that mood that you're looking for? Because I mean, I see all these pictures, they all look great to me. So how are you deciding which you one? You want? Me for like the say if I'm the client? Yeah. Or for me or for my or for, blog post? Yeah, yeah, for your cookbook, let's say oh, that. Oh, for cookbook, because we already defined that, you know, we want to highlight strawberries and seasons. We have that story in our head. Uh -huh. Like we really, because this is in the chapter for summer, let's say, or this is a blog post for summer. So I really want to make sure that I highlight that summer and I think about light. Think about, well, I really want it bright. I really want it that bright and airy light. I don't want it that choked out dark light. Mm -hmm. So with that, I know that I already I want that light. And then when I look and I'm happy with the placement, the composition, and how the light falls on the subject, then I'm good. I've made a decision. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hardest things to do as a photographer. And when you're shooting is making that final decision. And it's the, one of the hardest things when you work on a team. You just have to make a decision because you can shoot it 10,000 times because how many of you here shoot the same thing 50 times, right? And you keep <laughs> shooting it and shooting it and shooting it. Yes, you keep nodding your head because it happens. It's hap it ha used to happen to me. Now we make a decision. We say we, we shoot it. We shoot it about four times, let's say, for the blog. And we're like, we're done. We're happy with it because we're satisfied. We like the story it evokes. And it's saying what we wanted to say. And we're quick at decision making. Yeah. If you asked us four years ago, this thing would probably be shot 50 times. It'd take forever to go through, and it'd look all the same. Yeah. So I'm well, happy with that. Yeah. A lot of it's yeah. like what you've decided before you've ever picked up the camera. Because mm -hmm. you know, you're deciding your mood, how you're going to capture the light, before you've even started to lay your subject down. So it's like you, you start to think about those things. Like, what do I want someone to feel when I, I get this? Sometimes, like, sometimes I don't know. And then and that's the situation where it's like you're just going to kind of keep walking around. It's like, do I like this? Do I feel this? Is it my feeling it today? It's like, nah, yeah, maybe yes, no. Um, but most of the time for us, it's like we like to, to kind of get it ahead of time. It's like what we want. 
You know, so it's like, what do I want someone to feel? It's like, what time of year do I want someone to feel like they're experiencing? You know, is this a squash dish? Also, you know, squash dish, or especially you know, like a, a you know winter squash dish. It's like you know, it's like I want someone to feel like it's fall. You know, so that's something get a little bit more of that moodier, darker, darker lighting, darker shadowing. Um, other times, it's like I want to feel like it's the first asparagus of spring. You know, so you get that a little bit of brighter, or you know, and so you either concoct the story or just you know get what's that emotional sense that you want someone to experience when they're seeing the image before the camera's been picked up before the surface has been chosen. Mm -hmm. So let's say, yes. Um, so I have a question in regards to um, a focus point mm -hmm. on, like on the cherries. Mm -hmm. I saw maybe one or two, maybe three that it just really popped out. Mm -hmm. And then there was a little blurry mm -hmm. with the rest of them. So me still learning the technical piece, mm -hmm. in order to get them all in focus, mm -hmm. or say you wanted those strawberries and that together mm -hmm. all in okay. focus, mm -hmm. what would you do? So for that, that's what you're changing through your f-stop, through your okay. depth of field. So basically, the smaller your f-stop number is, so depends on your lens for what you can change on that. But the smaller the number, the more shallow it's going to be. Okay. So the, the more blurry it's going to be all around in the back. So you're going to have like one kind of like at a really low number, so like two, one, eight. You're going to have just this thin sliver that's in focus, and the rest is dropping out of focus beyond that, in front and behind. As that number gets bigger, then everything starts to and you know, the, the, the depth of, or the, the focus area is basically increased through the framing. Mm -hmm. So let's say the client says, now this is my product, I make these things and I still love pink, but I wanna give an artisan feel to it. I wanna give a rustic farmhouse feel because my bakery is in my farmhouse. I'm like, great. So we're gonna create that story and rather than shoot on white, we're gonna shoot on this more dark, dark wood. So to change that story, we're not only changing the surface, we're gonna change the light too. Mm -hmm. So let me just intentionally block knowing that we know what the client wants, we know what... So let's go ahead and let go, okay. and I'm gonna find it, and I'll have you hold. You'll find it, and then we know what the mood is. So okay. let's allow the client to here. see their product. So for this time, now I'm gonna switch to this side versus the other one. So after you know, shooting here, just this brief little bit, and then thinking about how the light's coming, so I kinda have my light is almost flooding like this way, so I'm shooting on that side, it's a little bit harder to block. Now it's like I can just, Really, if I start blocking here, I just have those little smaller sections I can start to deal with, so it's going to become a little bit easier. We still like the, mm -hmm. we still like the vertical? Yeah, let's keep it consistent. Okay. And again, always still keeping to the mood or the story. And I'm, when we're shooting for clients or even for ourselves, we always want to stay consistent. That's pretty so in sad. this case, we're always thinking, okay, farmhouse feel, artisan, once that would look. So we want to intentionally block the light. And some clients, when they see this, they'll say, well, can I see it both ways? Like, yeah, yeah. just should have charged, just char pay more. But sure. Sure. You but you just get two shots today. Yeah. You don't get five. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes clients will see that. They'll say that. They, like, I can't decide which mood I want. You know, can I see both? And then when they see both, they can't decide either because they like both. So, um, and texture helps. And definitely one, this is going to be one of the best investments you can ever have. You see that feel? Immediately that changes it. So if you were to go into a bakery and you saw two different, the two different pictures, which will be shown side by side, you'll see the light and the dark. It also defines like the design. It defines kind of the personality of the baker. It defines the, um, the whole mood of, of the shop. Are we able to see the white side by side too? There we go, see? So all we did, change the texture, and change, and change a board. Two different voices. So in terms of a blog post and the and writers who write their blog posts and share their, their pictures, if I go to um, a blog and I see this, I'm gonna think, yeah, that person's got some real like rustic, maybe farmhouse texture. Maybe they kinda live in the country, maybe, if they, their bakery is there. And this one I feel can lend to a more modern personality. I mean, see, we're talking it through, and this is what I see. But you could see something totally different. You could say, hey, Diane, this is actually the artist here. And this is the, you know, this is the farmhouse here. So 